come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, little turd balls, and welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show no. podcast coming no. your way. What? <laughs> I, I refuse fitting, to go with the with the rest of the podcast if that's how we're going to start. I mean, that's how this movie started. It seems appropriate. <laughs> Well, we're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, do us a favor wherever you find us. Hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And uh, you're into the same stuff that we are, hopefully. I mean, you know, great classic movies of the 1980s, maybe the greatest of all classic 1980s movies. But these are the people who are going to be talking to the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by <laughs> Colin. I almost said Michaela because this feels like a Michaela movie. But <laughs> it's Colin. no one claimed Stargrove. No one, no one said I'm Stargrove. I'm Lance Stargrove. No one claimed that. Wow, it's gonna blow right past that, huh? <laughs> yep. Um, Colin, Colin, yeah. what did what did we watch tonight? I remain convinced that this was in Michaela's hip pocket and would have come eventually to the Saturday Night I do Free too. Show. It's been on the list. And actually, <laughs> yeah. my husband was like, wait, I thought your pick was last week. When he saw what we were watching. <laughs> so he right? thought so, too. <laughs> well, this uh, cinematic uh, masterpiece is called Never Too Young to Die. Mm. So we watched a James Bond movie, Colin? It does sound like a James Bond movie, doesn't it, Holly? It, it sure sounds does. like a James Bond Jr. movie. <laughs> It is Billy Bond movie. Billy Bond? Uh, yeah. Where we're going with? yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is from the year 1986 and directed Jimmy, by Jimmy Bond. Jimmy Bond. Yeah. Jimmy Bond. That was the Casino Royale version yeah. of it. Jimmy Bond. <laughs> I was going to say that. And I'm like, oh, no. But he was actually Billy in this at one point. Um, yeah. The director is a guy named Gil Bettman. And I believe that he has done uh, like episodes of Knight Rider and stuff like that, TV shows. But uh, sounds like I think, a fake name, honestly. I think he, he has sounds only fake. directed one other feature film. Um, so yeah. Uh, never- Wait, is that is that why they had um, um, uh, George Lazenby in this? Because of the Bond connection, right? Yeah. Is that why? Yeah, it's gotta be. This is okay. literally the son I'm of just Bond making that connection. Yeah, he I was is. Like, oh, yeah. It's- George Lesnar made it, now I'm like, oh, I get it now. This is like Bond's last mission. And Got then it. we pick up with uh, with uh, Indiana Jones Jr. Or, or uh, young Indiana Jones, that's what it is. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what we all want to see, the kids of famous super spies and superheroes running around with their Colin, you better kids. watch what you say because Hollywood's going to do it now that we've put out in the universe. We are going to get a, a torch <laughs> passing of James Bond. God damn it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Well, George. He a, yeah, he had a son with M or something, and here we go. Do you guys remember like that scene in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull where you think Shia LaBeouf's gonna pick up the hat? Yeah, I think the whole world like punched the like <laughs> wanted to punch everybody at that moment. I don't think anybody I, thought that was funny. I think everyone was like, "Fuck you for that." Yeah, I remember watching <laughs> yeah. the scene, and I literally was like, "Nope," and I said it out loud. I was like, "Nope." Well, dude, that nope. could still happen because they're making a new Indiana Jones movie and Harrison Ford's like 80. So, I mean, you know, you know what? We don't need any more Indiana Jones movies. I know. We don't. We're good. No, we don't. And yeah. we also don't no. need to employ Shia LaBeouf anymore. We so. didn't need Kingdom of the Crystal <laughs> Skull either, but uh, no, we, no, we did not. That movie was terrible. Terrible. Um, it's a half good movie. Come on. The first half. First half is pretty. pretty no, nice. stop. No. Right. no. Um, so this CGI movie. Mask, Colin. He's in a fridge. We're going to do this. Fight me. This movie, yeah, we can talk about this, the fridge logics that Mythbusters <laughs> busted. <laughs> That's for an uh, guess what's coming to the Saturday Night Freak Show next week. Uh, uh, oh, no. So George Lazenby, for those of you who don't know who we were talking about, was James Bond for one movie. He was famously the On Her Majesty's Secret Service James Bond and then uh, was not rehired, even though that's a pretty good movie. You going to fight me on that one? On Her Majesty's no, Secret I've Service. Right. Yeah, there you right. go. Right. It's fine. I have no problem with it. That's the one where James Bond gets married. That's why nobody remembers because they didn't see that movie. Yeah, he got married in that movie. Uh, um, so nobody wants James Bond to be married. Neither did the producers, apparently. There you go. But that's a story no. for another yeah. day. 
Um, it's true. He's the ultimate bachelor. <laughs> he should not be married. <laughs> well, the movie actually stars John Stamos. That's right. There it from is. Full I was House. Like, let's get to who is actually in this movie. Let's let's talk about this. Yeah. Stamos himself. Yeah, but this is before Full House. This movie. This is was before made. Full House. This but- is the year before, though, and the same year as Rad. So this is like right. these movies are forever linked now. <laughs> yes. Coming so out. This is the- why they all got cast on Full House. Clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now we've tracked back both of the last week we did Rad with Lori Laughlin. This week we're doing uh, Never Too Young to Die with John Stamos. Next week we're doing. We'll find Bob out. Bob Saget's. <laughs> It's not going to be Something good. Something with okay. Dave Coulier, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Uncle Jesse stars as Lance Stargrove. Lance Stargrove is a college kid who's a gymnast who's so awesome yeah, that he, he gets his own goddamn theme song. Sean, let her rip. Stargrove. Stargrove. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> it sounds very 80s sitcom theme. It is not like a rocking and ripping song that no. we heard Rad last week. It is not like that. No, right? no, no. Considering the lineage of the 80s and Gene Simmons, you think there'd be a little more rocking in this? Right. Uh, seriously, I all I really knew about this movie coming into it was like I knew it was John Stamos and it was Gene Simmons who is batshit crazy. That's all I knew. I didn't know the context of his batshit craziness, just that he was crazy. And that there was like, I, I saw multiple people talking about the epic song. So naturally, the cumulate, the bringing those factors together, I was like, we're going to get an epic rock ballad right out the gate. <laughs> yeah, like the final battle is going to be a battle of rock. Right. Like so there's going to be guitars my, shooting lasers and shit. You can imagine my surprise when we got fucking the odd couple theme song. Yeah. Like Star Grove, rocking like a hurricane. I don't know. Star Grove. <laughs> it kind of sounds like something Alan Thicke would have wrote, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? No, you yeah. know what it sounded to me like? It sounded like, um, not the Pointer Sisters. It sounded like uh, one of the songs out of like Beverly Hills Cop or something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and but it's weird that it like i mean because they are kind of adapting well a little bit of the formula of the james bond movies so like your theme song is incorporated into the musical score throughout the movie so they're constantly yes. doing like notes that are or like the whole I mean, way through the score in in theory i get that concept and with a different song it could have worked because it works for james bond but that just made this movie an 80 that come for an hour and a half yeah, James Bond has sexy songs, you know? Right. This song yeah. is very, like, wholesome and, like, daytime, and if that makes cheery. sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, Wilson what'd you buddy. think of the actual <laughs> theme song, Never Too Young to Die, which played over the end credits? Would that have made it better? I mean, that was a little closer to the mark of what I expected. All right, hit us with a, a few bars, closer. Holly. No. Man. <laughs> All right, Sean has that one, though. I'm good. You just can't even hit, I'm make not, it. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not in the mood to sing after this. There was. There was, was not rocking young, enough. You're never too young to die. I don't even remember it. Yeah, that's the only uh, part you remember. <laughs> this is, and true. that's not even on tune. Who is the? There's a wrestler who uses that as his theme song. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well, a famous song. It that's definitely true. It wasn't Owen Hart. I'll tell you that. No. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Damn. Sorry. So, wow. Uh, I, I mean, I, I know it's been like 20 years, but that felt too soon. Yeah, that was like, that was low even for you, yeah, Sean. Yeah, that felt too soon. I'm not even a wrestling fan, and that was rough, man. I, I apologize to the Hart family. You should, uh, God damn it. So sorry. So we're introduced to this movie. Like we said at the top, we get, oh, yeah, that's right, because Gene Simmons, that's right. Tonight, we are making a addition to the Saturday night, a long awaited addition to the Saturday night freak show wall of fame. Uh, we're putting Gene Simmons, uh, the God of thunder himself, right up Is on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Uh, puts run him away. On the wall. Uh, with run the away. Three, <laughs> craziest movies. Trick or treat. Come That's on. That's right. He's because been saying, oh, yeah, yeah. he's been saying it for 50 years. It's <laughs> trick or treat. We I, and I have not seen that movie, Sean. We can't oh. have an episode where somehow Colin doesn't tie it all back to trick or treat. The uh, oft maligned underseen 80s classic from the year 1986 when Gene Simmons was having like this. So somebody's agent, right, says, 
hey, you should be like, like we can probably get you acting parts, right? So he got run yeah, away, which guy. we did on this show. We did. He did uh, uh, trick or treat in a little cameo. He's the main villain in Never Too Young to Die, and he's also the main villain in uh, 1987's Wanted Dead or Alive with uh, Rutger Hauer. And I think that basically, aside from, because uh, you've all seen Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. I mean, uh, of course. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, I think there's lasers and growling, and there's, there's a bunch of stuff in that movie. Yeah, well, that was a TV movie, so does that count? Yeah. I don't know. And then, uh, of course, later, Detroit Rock City, the Kiss movie, and all that other stuff. But yeah. So how do, how do we feel about like rock stars that cross into acting? Because I feel like it's something we don't see as much anymore. But like, there's some really good instances of it. Like, I think Bowie is really good, and whenever he shows up and stuff, especially like the man who fell to Earth and stuff, yeah. you know. I think- I feel like a big part of that is because we don't have rock stars anymore. That's very true. Yeah. How was Bon Jovi? Anymore. How was Bon Jovi in Vampires 2 or whatever? Well, that's I'm right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wasn't he the yeah. star of Vampires 2? Yeah. yeah. After making that, that little cameo appearance in Young Guns 2, right? Because he had that hit song. Yep. Uh, and I know like everyone remembers Bowie for Labyrinth and you know, Man Who Fell to Earth. But let's not forget, yeah. he was in The Prestige mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. It yeah, was. but I Bowie was watching that in the theater, and I it took me like a while. I was like, "Is that David Bowie? I think that's David Bowie." And then I obviously at the end, I was like, "It was fucking David Bowie." I was amazed. Yeah, because uh, even um, Mick Jagger had a role in a pretty um, like psychological movie called Performance back in the seventies, which was um, you know well regarded. Bowie, a man who fell to earth. I mean, like they had when they crossed over, it was like they actually were actors in like serious films. And then in the eighties, right. it was more like this is part of the industry now. We just kind of bring people from you know we cross pollinate. But I thought you know because yeah. we watched uh, Runaway and we said we thought uh, Gene Simmons was a pretty good screen performer. Um, yeah, he's a good bad guy. He knows how to overact like a bad yeah. guy should. But these yeah, are two very different bad guys. Very. Even very in this different. movie. If, if, <laughs> even, I was going to say, yeah, thank you, Colin. All right. I was going to say, he's two different bad guys in this movie. Uh, Gene Simmons said about this movie, he was offered two parts, Carruthers and Velvet Von Ragnar. And I t- he said, this is why you need to read the script before you accept a movie. Um, <laughs> so he plays Jesus. a uh, hermaphrodite, uh, like club singer who, uh, with called, coke nails, yeah, and this middle finger, uh, massive nail spike, right? That yes. uh, he kills people with, but he's a club singer. Th- okay, if I got this right, okay, who like governs over this like whole bunch of like uh, post apocalyptic Mad Max punks on motorcycles and, yeah all done up like it's conan the barbarian right and he has somehow motivated them to want to pollute the los angeles uh, i'm assuming it's la wherever we are water supply with toxic waste because reasons <laughs> <laughs> right because yeah, he's you're, a bond villain and that's what they do right you're evil in the 80s you don't that's it that's your reason yeah because that's all you he need. just wants to i think at the end he's because i love it <laughs> yeah Gene simmons is freaky because he when he laughs his eyes like <laughs> roll back in his head and they, they just go all white i mean but, yeah. who can who can do the best Michael Caine? Some men just want to watch the world burn. You know, I can't do Michael Caine, but <laughs> someone do it. Michaela, do it. it's on you. It was the, it was the okay, song of, of a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Velvet, Velvet Von Ragnar is introduced in a scene where he uh, is in, of course, like, I mean, because Los Angeles has a bunch of Coliseum sitting around this, uh, you know, like crumbling concrete area. Uh, I mean, I've never been there. Does it? Yeah, I? I don't. I don't know. I don't Apparently know. so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just Coliseum sitting around. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like and the Coliseum. It, well, he's you guys need to go to L.A. or something like yeah. this. It's not the ruins of Greece. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's a no, city. Sure? But that's what I'm saying. Is this movie? Is this movie take place in the future? I nothing. It nothing has tells to, right? Us, I don't no, know. nothing. Or an tells alternate us reality. reality. Nothing Something. is clear in this movie. Is it the future? Is it the past? Is he in high school? Is he in college? Like, I don't know anything. I know nothing about this. You know, you know me. I, I like to think that it's normal everyday stuff. And then there's just this tiny little subsection of dystopian wasteoids running around. 
Sure. Yeah. And that's it. Always where it's the post-apocalyptic view because they're riding around right through the streets uh, on these. I mean, with all this leather and spikes and helmets, uh, they, when they attack people, they don't use guns. They come up with axes and maces and they're riding around. They got like horse heads on the front of their bicycles. I mean, this would draw attention, but apparently at this cl- warehouse club, right. Or this, uh, you know, whatever Coliseum thing that they've got going on. Uh, this is, you know, their hangouts, right. How they get there. I always want to see that movie, you know, as the guy's like leaving his apartment and he's got to like drive to, you know, and everybody's looking at him at the stoplights. We never get to see that. Um, <laughs> so. is, that, is, that, is that what you want? <laughs> I'm sure that's a commercial somewhere. Yeah. Um, so they're addressed as uh, my little turd balls in the very first line of the movie. Uh, my little scuzz buckets. Um, and then, you know, Von Ragnar, you know, says this is my evil plan. But someone what? has stolen a disc. That's right. A floppy, a floppy disk. Because <laughs> <disc. laughs> it's 1986. No. It has the codes that will allow them to do this. So they bring in another inductee to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. And uh, this is where we thank MF Mad, because we probably would have overlooked this. But Tara Buckman, who plays the woman that is brought in on the, uh, whatever, the, 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 the torture device. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, she was also in a movie that we like called Night Claws. She was the lead character in in Night Claws, but she was also the mother who gets killed at the beginning of Silent Night, Deadly Night. So there you go, Tara Buckman. <laughs> That's right. I knew that haircut Night looked familiar. Keep coming back, man. <laughs> I knew she was familiar. Oh, not not Night Night Claws. Night Killer. Like, Sorry, Night Killer. Something we watched. <laughs> she was a Night what? Killer. Night Killer. Night Killer. Not Night Claws. Night yeah. Killer. The Italian. Yeah. Okay. Um, Two different movies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then we're introduced to our hero, Lance Stargrove, uh, who's a college student, I think. We're thinking at the end, it says uh, something about biology. He lives in a dorm. He yeah. lives in a dorm, whatever school yeah, he's in. It might you know? be a college. It might be a prep school. I don't know. He's a genius. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, you can't name your character this if it's not a sci fi movie. You just can't. Like, your character can't be Lance Stargrove for no reason. <laughs> It's like yeah. Captain Lance Stargrove of the Space Patrol. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. He should be in some sort of Space Force. He right. has to be, and he's not, and it's weird. Dad should have been in the Space Force, maybe. It's maybe sad. that's the sequel, right? Because you assume there was going to be like another one of these following the further exploits of Lance Stargrove. as Because he finds out he's like estranged from his dad, right? And it turns out, of course, that dad is a super secret agent working for the government um, who has stolen the disc. And he is accompanied by this guy named Carruthers on a super secret mission into the tunnels of Los Angeles to do something. They're going to blow something up or whatever with the guys that are all dressed like the Ghostbusters. As Sean said, we were watching the movie and uh, Carruthers goes over, which is, of course, spy speak for he betrayed us. Carruthers is very obviously Gene Simmons in a big red-headed wig and beard. Is it obvious? This is the question I asked during the uh, during the movie in the chat. Yeah, Sean, like, you, you but, um, called it out right away. You said he looked like Fred Armisen in a wig. And a he big does. Beard. No, I know. I know. Uh, I know it's him. But like, like I asked, did, did, did audiences at the time were they fooled? Did they know? They had to know, right? Colin, you probably saw this in theaters. What did you think? I didn't actually. I I caught it on video because I remember when it was on videotape. But I mean, to me, obviously, I knew who Gene Simmons was. I mean, I mean, we're like ten, at least right. ten years into the Kiss phenomena, right? At this point, True. Uh, I imagine that the people who are going to see this movie are going because, like, they don't know John Stamos. He's the guy from like what General Hospital or whatever the fuck he was on. Uh, yeah, they're going because Gene Simmons is in the movie, maybe. Right. Or Vanity, who's our other uh, moving from music Mm. to movies, because she had a little run, too, uh, because she was also in uh, Action Jackson, which why that hasn't been on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, what was the other one? Sorry. Um, She was uh, the last dragon. That's right. She she's one away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Which we did cover. (laughs) We did. That's right. Vanity of vanity. One, one more for vanity. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking if we had done terror train yet. Cause I was like, I thought we had, and I thought this was going to put her on the wall tonight, but we haven't done that yet. Is she in the original terror train? Yeah. Sorry. There is no second one. It's just called train. So I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. Is she yeah, really? She's in it. Fuck. I got to go mm -hmm. back and watch. Okay. It's um, called train. That's yeah, dumb. Was, yeah. Um, <laughs> I watch that. So it, oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, so uh, Drew Stargrove, the super secret agent, is betrayed and murdered by Velvet Von Red. No, sorry, Carruthers, right? Um, well, Holly, he's were you killed by Velvet? Was he? I thought he was killed by uh, no, Carruthers ran away and then he eventually ends up getting by Velvet, okay. By the nail, I can't even remember. Did they kill him with the nail. There's a lot of explosions going no, on. No, she, she had like a like a shotgun, like an explosive thing, and she shot him in the side, and he did oh, like yeah, five flips. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did an '80s flip through the air. <laughs> yeah, and then he landed. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then did that thing where he like threw his head back and laughed, and his eyes rolled back. Yeah, but yeah. this was after, of course, they had captured him and brought him into their secret lair, and were interrogated. Where's the disc? And they're like, well, you know, it's like if. You're going to give me the disc if you want your son to live. And Drew Stargrove's like, well, you've discovered the one thing about me that I care about, or my soft spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> all the dialogue is gold in this movie. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's something. Um, so, and then they kill him. Uh, and so we're like, well, where is the disc? I mean, without the disc, we don't have a movie. So we're introduced to Lance Har uh, Stargrove, who actually we're introduced in like the same scene because they do this like cutting back and forth between him doing this gymnast routine. And does he right? sense it's the, it's the heist and the gym routine? Yeah, because yes, he's, Colin, he's, he does. Because it's his the dad, 80s. ESP his, was on it was at an all time high in the 80s. <laughs> That's what's and going they're, on they're there, right? Flashing they're flashing back and forth because it's the standard trope of like my dad's supposed to come to my ball game, but it's his gymnast, his gymnastics meet. Yeah. Is yeah. Cross cut. What, match? I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Don't but know. when he's taping up a, his uh, arms, intense heist, he imagines right, his yeah, dad is taping up his wound, <laughs> wounded leg. When dad gets shot and killed, then Lance or Lance biffs his, uh, you know, the end of his, uh, his routine and, face plants in the mat and it's like oh no i know yeah. that something's happened to my dad yeah this is like et when et gets drunk it's like the same thing yeah but, like juxtaposing these two things just makes gymnastics look so stupid like it's just if you have this really serious like high intensity situation and then i gotta perform on the rings right now like it's not it's not the same yeah the music helped. <laughs> Cause it, the music yeah, was it's amazing. using the same dramatic music <laughs> for him on the rings. And it's like, dude, you are to the director. It's like, you're, you're, you're screwing any kind of like investment we have in this action scene by cutting away to the gymnastic stuff. Cause they are not the same. <laughs> the intensity is not the same. You tell that to a gymnast, Colin. True. You don't know. My apologies. Do they do all. take that yeah. shit way too seriously. That's right. right yeah, apologize, there. Colin. This will be the apology <laughs> episode. Yeah. Send people. We're going to apologize for it. And we're going to move on. Well, he meets at the funeral Vanity, um, who is Darja Deering. Is that right? Darja, yeah. Darja, Darja Deering. Yep. Darja Deering, who was a partner of his dad's. Were they just lover? determined to give everyone names that were just hard to say? Lance Stargrove. There you go. It was easy. All right. But who's the bad guy? Velvet Von Ragnar. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And Carruthers. Um, Carruthers still continues to work within the government agency. I was about to say CIA. I don't know what it is. But yeah, his identity is not revealed until a shocking twist at the end, which caught Holly completely off guard. Shocked. Okay. Well, it was Sean's question earlier. Did you did you know that it was Gene Simmons in uh, make a, in, a, in a disguise? Oh, we're being serious. Yes, I knew that okay. was Gene Simmons. <laughs> I mean, when, <laughs> when I mentioned the Fred Armisen thing, I didn't know it was him. I'm just like that guy. Just looks like Fred Armisen. I didn't know it was Gene Simmons at that time. Yeah, no, at that point, I didn't know. I laughed. I was like, he does kind of. And then later, I was like, oh fuck, that's Gene Simmons. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Sean was so. shocked when it was like. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Right. This I'm when, very when, when, he, when he peeled off that orange beard, and went ah! <laughs> yes, <laughs> very surprised. 
I was a little concerned he was going to dig his fingernail into his like skin and pull off like a skin mask. I was like, I can't watch that. That's just yeah, too much. Like the, too the fingernails are so gross. We are famously so anti-long fingernails here at the Freak Show. <laughs> we yeah. really we've are. Had, it's a, we've it's, had some very interesting behind the scenes discussions about this. Uh, we know where we stand. Yeah. Thoroughly disgusted by long fingernails. So I needed a trigger warning. Michaela gave me one for this week's episode and I appreciated that. But you know what? It still grossed me out. I still had a problem with it the whole movie. It was hard to watch. Well, you want to talk about long fingernails. They really come into play in a scene where Stargrove follows uh, uh, Darja to. um, Yeah, because he meets her under like tense circumstances, right? Because he finds out that he uh, his dad left him a farm, a retreat, if you will, (laughs) Um, where when Stargrove goes there. Vanity is like fending off and shooting at like these uh, barbarian hordes that are busting into the barn. And so he's like, I knew my dad was into something other than, you know, selling oil or whatever. And so then he follows her to this club, um, which is describe, describe this club for me. What do we got going on here? Um, It is like a cross between a punk club and a drag club. It All reminded right. me of the <laughs> Gasworks from Wayne's World, but like more Mad Max. Yes. There you go. Yes. Okay. All right. That's good. And and more fingernails as uh, as we get in this scene. Yeah, that waitress had Ooh. had quite the quite the claw. And then we get Gene oh. Simmons in uh, one of the uh, I mean costume designers, right? Um, that was <laughs> elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope. Uh, not heavy i mean that was a hell of a headpiece yeah that headpiece was i mean we're talking like like the sunny and share show share costume kind of kind of costume like Full Vegas outlandish headdress. it's a great yeah. comparison yeah. yeah thank you <laughs> so i had actually read something where they said that uh that costume was actually worn by uh i think it was linda carter in right uh, did you read this too I did in Wonder Woman, right? Didn't she wear it for if you, a thing? If you tell me that was designed by Bob Mackie, I win this podcast. Uh, well, it doesn't say that. I'm looking at it right now. It says that it's the same costume that Linda Carter wore for her 1980 television special Encore, where she tried oh. to look like a member of the band of Kiss and performed their song, I Was Made for Loving You. So, bam, multiple levels of shit going on in that scene. Uh, so she wore that to try and look like Kiss? Uh, Apparently, <laughs> according to uh, the, the internet, um, Gene Simmons also uses his prodigious uh, tongue to like smooch some adoring not, fan in the assault. Good. I think is the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah it's a violation. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> and then like, listen. We all know this is what you're famous for, Gene Simmons. Especially at this point, you don't have to constantly remind us. Okay, we get that's it. That's why he. We get that's it. why he was hired. The director's like, yeah, get that tongue in there. I'm trying to think. Did Guaranteed. he use? Did he use the tongue in uh, Runaway? It is not a feature of Trick did. or Treat. Yeah, which is why I, I don't like think so. Are you sure? Are you sure we didn't see it? He might have like stuck it out at one point. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. He was a much more collected villain in Runaway, if that makes sense. Like, he is much more stoic and, like, just kind of like manipulating other people to do things, sort of villain. That is right. Instead of uh, uh, showing off in his costuming, he showed off in his little mechanical spiders. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) And in Trick or Treat, he was just like the friendly neighborhood DJ. And in Wanted Dead or Alive, he was an Arab terrorist blowing stuff up. And Rutger Hauer had to track him down. That has one of the greatest endings of any movie ever made. Anyway, oh, oh, damn. Um, involves a grenade in the mouth. Gene Simmons. <clears throat> um, so anyway, uh, Stargrove goes backstage because he has all of uh, Von Ragnar's records, he says, right? In order to try and get in there and uh, plant like a tracking device. That was what that whole scene was for, right? It would appear so, yeah. His chewing gum tracking device that his Asian stereotype of a friend made for him. This guy is the Q of the movie, uh, the quartermaster yes. of uh, Never Too Young to Die. Um, he, I can't even remember his name, but he's Cliff. The, Cliff, thank you. Cliff is the roommate who is the super nerdy, so much so that he wears every color of the rainbow in different patches at once on his clothing. I mean, his clothing is made of 
patches of different yeah it's a 90s thing in the 80s this movie saw the future um <laughs> and he comes up with all sorts of goofy stuff like the flamethrower which of course is going to show up again at the end of the movie he comes up with the chewing gum tracking device uh he helps lance cheat on his exams because i mean really? yeah because lance is a that. gymnast damn it that's what he's good at he's good at aerobics or aerobic yeah whatever gymnastics so so he's got to keep up his gymnastic scholarship so his friends gotta help him cheat yeah well yeah you have to maintain it above a c so he's not the brains right he's the brawn he can go but then he like when uh he's actually like accosted by the bad guys who break into his house at some point and they're like give me the disc they don't say that they say like give me the ram cake is that what they're saying the ram yeah. cake. what are they calling it it's ram ram cage but it's they're talking it about ram cage. i don't know what the fuck yeah well, did you bring me the ram cake do we have ram don't cake? know very weird <laughs> i'm just gonna start all right it's ram cake now that's fine <laughs> um we can keep it as ram cake you know they they beat Better. star grove down but then as he's on the ground being whipped by these two cavemen dudes uh he sees a photo of his dad and he realizes that his name he discovers is Stargrove. <laughs> he does. And he realizes he's got the glow within him, the yeah. gymnastic glow within him to kick some ass. The he, gymnast glow. Is that a thing? <laughs> I think so. Okay. It's more, sw- more sweat though. Because he doesn't really use gymnastic skills against anybody in this movie. <laughs> no, he doesn't. At all. Yeah, he should have had to like climb a balance beam or something, or there should have been yeah. like Who something made of rings in his somebody. house. Yeah, I, some really, clips. I really needed that gymnastic uh, trait to come back at some point, and it just didn't. Well, he does yeah, like sure. uh, limited stuff where he's like lying on his back, and then suddenly, whoo, he's on his feet. You know that no. kind of stuff. No, yeah, no, he did. Saw it. Saw it happen in that no, scene. I know he did. I know he did, but that has nothing. It's not enough. That's not a gymnast. Like no, no. Colin. In the plot summary of this movie, he is described as. An estranged gymnast son. That tells me gymnast is a major part of his personality and his character arc in this movie. Right. I, I is, didn't see it on screen. That is supposed yeah. to mean that he is a, ma- a potential man of action, right? He's, he's a gymnast. Yeah. He's going to be able to hurdle himself through walls and downstairs, do all this crazy super spy stuff like his but dad. But he doesn't do that. That's yeah, my like, point. He doesn't exactly. actually do that on screen, though. Like, yeah, shoot people do that, but he doesn't in this movie, and that's what I needed. There were some kicks. I don't know. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> there needed to be a set piece built around. That's how you do these movies, right? If you establish that, you have to build a set piece around, like, some his, uh, you know. His, uh, his unique special talent yeah. of being a gymnast so we can show it off. It's too bad he wasn't a wrestler like the other guys earlier making fun of him. This is like Bucker Rabanzai all over again. Our karate <laughs> rock star doctor champion, and he did none of those things in the movie. No, but okay, well, I'll give this one a little bit more because it's like, okay, so he is required to do like action y stuff as the film goes on. And so, basically, yeah, he's just I supposed think, to be light on his feet. Yeah, that's all they're saying is like, because I mean, if it was me, right, I'd have a problem probably like chasing down like uh, these terrorists, but not probably. like a gymnast. I, I <laughs> want this movie. Thank you for your vote of confidence. And okay, I want that's the every man I want to see kick a terrorist ass. <laughs> You want to see an every man on a mission, you got to see a movie called Blue Ruin. There you go. That is like, if this shit there happened you to you, <laughs> that's, <true. laughs> that's uh, Blue Ruin. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, Vanity ends up like saving him from, I think there's like a car chase where she is in her Corvette and goes underneath a truck because that's cool, but I couldn't figure cool. out why else she did it. Had Christmas she, vacation she- happened at this point? Where we see no. this exact same that stunt. Was, I think that was, that was 89. Yep. Mm. So Christmas she should have stole from this movie, huh? And yeah. Fast yeah. and Furious, where everybody wanted to do that scene where, you know, you're driving underneath the truck, you know? She yeah. should have um she should have gone under the truck, waited till like Stamos drove past, and then swiped out and crushed the two dudes on the bike. Yeah. Like that's the thing. That's the thing you do. Yeah. There's got to be some yeah. reason for being under there, except like maybe it's because we're on a desert road and like they would see that she was there 
If, right. Uh, right. And that would spoil the chase because it would throw the odds in Stamos's favor. If he has a super spy, she's a super spy. Right. Do we establish that, uh, yes. you know, is also there. And so, yeah, there's a whatever shootout because she's got this giant gun. I, I was waiting for like her car to have some kind of James Bondy shit, you know, the oil slick, you know, the, the smoke screen like Spy Hunter. Right. I mean, you got to have that kind of stuff. <laughs> None yeah, if they were go- if they were going for James Bond in this, they really uh they more they yeah missed, more gadgets. They missed the essence of James Bond. Yeah, James Bond seems to be easy to knock off, and yet how missed the mark several times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like how how close to that formula can you get before you're like ripping it right <laughs> off? Although I have seen Triple X and uh, not a comedy, but that's a James Bond movie. Like that is the. St- structure of a james bond movie yes lifted 100 percent um okay so uh okay now yeah, I'm, trying I'm, to, lost. <laughs> I yeah. I'm trying to connect the dots between uh and we just watched it but basically i think um the where do we go after the we got the big show at the which was um i mean really just there to be a big show he does put the tracking device on there follows Darja. His bike gets blown up, right? Because they did try to kill him. And then he borrows his Cliff's bike. He's like, hey, I need your bike. And like, you might not get it back. And the way he goes. And then in the next scene after, yeah, he abandons the bike during the the car chase. And there's a little dubbed over line where he's like, hey, but then what about my bike? Because they just forget it. They just drive away. (laughs) She's like, get in. And they're like, no more bicycle. And in the next scene, like, I think Cliff like shows up and he's like, hey, I got a new bike. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, it was great i mean did, so did we already go to the farm and there was like the weird um apple uh sexual tension? oh yeah we can't forget that <laughs> yeah we can't well, forget that. say, that's the next <laughs> yeah. big moment i remember yeah this is yeah. the big moment no this is the big moment of the movie let's be honest this is, yeah. it. This is like, the moment yeah why yeah. is he why is he not? Is he? Did he go all like I'm a super spy now? I can't. I can't be having sex. It'll throw me off my mission. Like, why are they not? Why is he trying well, to destroy like, himself? Well, he's like 12, so it's probably his first time, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so dive in there, bud. Like, what? <laughs> I remember it now. They, they go to the. They go to like headquarters, right? Where Carruthers is there, and he's like, I think I have an idea on how we can. Uh, we're going to use. Uh, Stargrove and Darja as the bait to lure Von Ragnar. And then we cut to this, to like, you know, cabin where she's he's pissed at her for some reason. And that what I what I don't remember putting his life in jeopardy or something that happened. I don't I don't remember. Um, sure. Doesn't matter at this point. Yeah. So she begins this epic seduction of him, which has to be seen to be believed uh, I think her first goes on for so long because so first long. of all, when the eighties uh, pop tune starts, the seductive pop tune, that's how, you know, you're in for like, well, this is good. This is we're in for a thing here, right? We may as well strap Can ourselves I, in. I, I have, I, this might be a bit of an overshare, but I'm saying it anyway. It's so obvious that at this point I had gotten up to go pee and from the bathroom, I heard the music and I was like, I'm missing the sex scene. And I had to like, <laughs> but but to my surprise, like it hadn't even started. That's right. Like, that's yeah. how long it is. That's because in the eighties, you don't have sex unless there's a sultry saxophone on the and soundtrack. An and that's right? coming. Kenny G was all over this. <laughs> but usually you would hear three notes and it cut to them already being in bed, you know, and this, yeah. no, you get like, I don't know, a minute of this song before they even go inside. That's because yeah. we need foreplay. Uh, Michaela, that's what's going on yeah, here. We need apples. <laughs> <laughs> we hoses. need what else did he hose it oh, what? Oh, he started boy. with something else? else he started because uh yeah so he's he, imagine this okay so they're on like the deck of this uh building she like peels her top off and so she's just got like a bathing suit on and goes and sits in the chair and stamos like is trying not to look at her right that's the whole thing like no i'm pissed at you i'm not gonna look at you she's making doe eyes at him and so he uh i think he goes inside for something it wasn't the apple first of all <laughs> no what was the first thing he got when he came back out i don't remember god damn it i just remember him putting his face in his hands a lot you know yeah. like he was kept putting like he's like oh i can't look i can't look you know there's a lot of that well she's oiling herself down yeah 
And he's like, nope, I can't can't look at this. And then she like undoes the strap on the back of her uh, bathing suit. So he's like, fuck it. Right. Uh, you're not breaking my <laughs> concentration. I'm going to go get me an apple. So he goes in the house and gets an apple. Then he just aggressively eats this apple. It was a Perrier water was the first thing because we had oh, close ups of the, the bottle, bottle. Like, tipping over it. Some kind right. of right. <laughs> I need a drink. Yeah, it's the most ridiculous. So if, if any of our listeners have seen Walk Hard, it is very much that let's duet scene in Walk Hard where they're trying to distract themselves with anything they can find so they don't fuck. It is it is as comedic as that too. It is. Yeah, but he has no resistance, as any man wouldn't. Once she breaks out the garden hose and wets down her hair, he's like, screw it. And all this is done silent, of course, as uh, we're carried away by the uh, amazing romance of this sultry, hot <laughs> scene, which is being watched by the government dudes from up on the the, right? the cliff's edge, whatever. It, I, I'm pretty sure the last shot we saw was Gene Simmons looking through the binoculars then this 20 minute scene happens and then we come back to Gene Simmons still looking through binoculars like, I think something's going on down there. <laughs> They've been out of sight for a while now. Yeah. Right. I haven't heard anything in hours. <laughs> <laughs> so of course it turns out that because he is velvet Von Ragnar, he uh, lands down there with his helicopter and abducts them. Right. And mm. puts their stunt doubles. I am convinced in their yeah. place so the government won't yeah. know that they're gone <laughs> and he squirrels Brilliant. them back to his uh lair which is the aforementioned uh coliseum out in the middle of nowhere where they engage in gladiatorial combat <laughs> um yeah for like two seconds yeah and i know i was everyone disappointed gets blown away again i know right i expected like a like a, a battle to go on like you're in the pit now here's uh, a broken bottle and half a stick. Go for it. Yeah. Right. I don't even think they had anybody that they were going to f have them fight. Uh, they basically bring them in and there's all these guys like chanting. Oh, we, forget them. we forgot about the big guy. Yeah. The, yeah the pyramid. Hair. Pyramid. Is that pyramid? Is that his name? Pyramid. Yeah. He's sense. the guy who tried to attack vanity in the barn. Yes. Yeah. Um, who gets his face rubbed in horse shit, right? She puts his face in the horse shit. And, yeah. uh, and then here at the end, uh, Stargrove challenges him to a duel in the gladiatorial arena. And, and then just shoots him? And then just shoots him. Well, okay, so he him. doesn't have a gun, but he ends up uh, like backflipping or something using his gymnastic skills to knock somebody over who had a gun. And then he shoots the guy and it's like, okay, done. And then the cavalry arrives in the helicopter and they are just kind of like laying into them with the uh, machine guns, which are strapped to the helicopter. It was kind of an interesting, just roped on there. And they're Did we mention that there is another Saturday night freak show alumni in this movie? Oh, Robert England. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, who gets a special appearance by credit at the end of this movie. Cause this is 1986. And so this would have been after the release of nightmare on Elm street part two. Sure. Yep. It was before Elm Street three. Uh, England is still not getting his name in, uh, you know, above the title of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. But he's in this. Who is he? Who does he play in this movie? The villain tech guy. There you go. Yeah. He's the guy who Chris somehow, or something like that. Yeah. Like, wasn't it Randy Rowdy Roddy or something? Um, None of those. No. Yeah. But what, what, why is he in this movie? Why is Robert England taking a role like this at yeah, this why, point in his career? Who he knew that he's in it and like doing the special appearance by like what what friend is he doing a favor for? Yeah, right? It's such a tiny role for a movie that like I don't think got a theatrical release. I'd be shocked if it did. I think this it may got have like been... a limited. Yeah, I think it did actually play like, you know, around, but it didn't have like a big studio behind it. I can't remember who put it out. Actually, now it's MGM, but I don't think it was an MGM movie originally. But I looked at the Wikipedia for this movie in a, re in a reception sec section. There was nothing about a theatrical release. Okay. There was, and there was no box office numbers either. So if it mm. did, it was really small and really limited. But I mean, we, we're maybe laboring under the most mistaken impression that Robert England is like a star. Like maybe this is what Robert England had, you know, like aside from that sweet, sweet Freddy Krueger money that he, you know, eventually was able to bank. At this point, you don't know there's going to be like, uh, you know, 12 sequels or whatever. 
And it's like, no, well. but you've already done two. And like this, if it was a bigger role in this movie, I would understand. But it's such a small role in a nothing movie. That's what I don't get. If it was a lead role or something, that would make sense to me. Have you seen uh, Robert England in the Phantom of the Opera where he does have a lead role? No. <laughs> no. No, I have not. <laughs> well, <laughs> not good. One day you may. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> well, there might no. be a reason for, like, um, well, good. We need something to replace Repo the Genetic Opera as our most hated movie. So bring that. <laughs> uh, that wasn't our most hated. We had one uh, dissenting opinion. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and that was me. And I liked it. So there. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> the um, Ragnar gets away. Right. And yes. he is able to with the what was it? Robbie. Robert England's playing Riley. Riley. Riley has devised this amazing technology called the briefcase detonator, right? Mm. And he's given it to Ragnar. So Ragnar can now remotely detonate this thing. Is he detonating something? I'm not entirely sure. I think he's opening a door. <laughs> it, but remotely, right? Or, or he's turning a valve. Something that's like a bad of, of valves they can turn on that will allow toxic something to get into the water who yeah. knew it was that easy i know because this g goes under the assumption that there's like toxic waste flowing in channels throughout the country but if you reverse right. it somehow it will come back into the water supply i've got to say first of all well first of all uh robert england right as he's like entering the shit on the computer and gene simmons comes up and he says something about like uh is the uh is the combination or the concoction going to be lethal and Robert England answers worse. I mean, come on, this is uh, <laughs> which is what <laughs> I don't. This is great. I love this stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the that's the the like the mad scientist part of all. It's like, is it lethal? Oh, oh much worse. Much worse. <laughs> yes, it's the it's the evilness of it all. Yes, it's like, oh no, it's much worse. So they're not going to die. They're just going to be tortured. That's that's what's worse, right? Got to be. Well, I don't know because reanimated, uh, maybe. He says he's going to irradiate the water supply forever or whatever, as as like Bond villain. And I know it's not a Bond movie, but we're saying it's a Bond movie. As Bond movie villain plots go, right? Contaminating the water supply of one city does not rank high up there on the like stakes meter. <laughs> no, this this not this ranks all. right up there with dehydrating members of the UN, a la Batman. Has anyone seen the Batman movie? Come on. They dehydrate members of the UN. They're little piles of dust in that. What? Come on. <laughs> in the people. what? The Batman movie? <laughs> The Batman movie, you know, like the old Adam West Batman. Oh, oh that one. Yeah, you yeah, have to yeah. be more specific than just the Batman movie, Sean. Yeah. Well, what other Batman movie do they dehydrate members of the UN? None <laughs> of the new There's ones. There's like 15 Batman movies. I don't fucking know. I haven't seen them all. What's yes, worse? The Adam West. I'm sorry. Dehydrating them or blowing off all their clothes like it does in the Get Smart movie, The Nude Bomb, where it goes off and all of a sudden you're naked. <laughs> I fucking love Get Smart, man. Uh, I'll take Get Smart uh, over anything else. Um, <laughs> that's wonderful. I was actually thinking about Get Smart during the movie. <laughs> um, but I was I was thinking about um is it it's uh Batman begins with, with the scarecrow containing the the supply, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, but he's oh. dispersing like a toxin into the air that make everybody crazy and they're all going to kill each other. So. Yeah. But that's this is also the plot there. of the crazies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. It does seem to have a lot bigger scope in that than it does when it, maybe it's just when you're doing like spy stuff that seems small. If it's a sheriff in a small town who's got to deal with it, then it seems big, you know? Right. But it's like, well, well, it's James yeah. Bond Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the end of this movie takes place on, uh, I don't know which dam this is. I hesitate to say that it's the, uh, I mean, it, it actually said uh, it's a famous dam. They probably, it's the one from Superman or whatever. Um, but it takes place on the top of the dam where there was a stunt sequence masterfully executed and edited. If uh, you ask me where uh, Stamos is riding, because I mean like the channel at the top of this thing is only what, like five feet wide. He's on his yeah. motorcycle, right? 
I think it's Cliff's stolen motorcycle. I'm not sure because Cliff had the disc. That was the whole deal. He had it in the back of his uh, motorcycle, which Carruthers. I made a special compartment for it. Yeah. That scene was also hilarious. Just Gene Simmons side eye, side eye acting. Right. When uh, Cliff is admitting that like, no, or he says like, no, uh, that you cranked your, your, or you busted your crankshaft. Like, no, no, that's a custom bike. Don't go anywhere near it. I'll deal with it myself. And Gene Simmons is giving him the like, aha. I know now where the disc is. Um, but this ending, uh, we got uh, uh, Stamos on this bike, and Simmons is hiding behind a little uh, little uh, access door, as you do, and sticks a fucking spoke in the bike, and the bike goes flying off the edge of the thing, and I was, like, terrified that Stamos himself was going to go flying off the side of the dam. Oh, no. I know. We can't lose Stamos. Which, to bring it back to the beginning of the podcast, that is also a thing that happens in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Someone damn. throws a spear through a, a motorcycle bike wheel, and then it goes flipping in the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too many that similarities to, have, to not address here. I think, that, I think that happens in most Indiana Jones movies, actually. <laughs> Once per movie. Yeah, because they did that in uh, Last Crusade. They right did that in Last w. Crusade, yeah. Mm-hmm. If there's a motorcycle in your movie, you must jam something into the spokes of it. Uh, but that looked pretty dangerous from stuntman's point of view. I mean, you know, just uh, looking yeah, at the, that overhead, it was like, oh, shit. I mean, the bike doesn't go flying off, but just you realize that that guy has a very limited, you know, amount of space. Um, yes. Stamos. Is it, the Hoover, is it the Hoover Dam they're on? It doesn't look like it. I think it's a smaller one than, yeah. It feels it's, smaller. I think, I think that's the one that they shot at, uh, they shot Superman at was the Hoover Dam. Oh, was it? Um, that's this the one's Transformers different. Dam. Hoover yeah. Dam. Um, so there is a, uh, tent sequence where, uh, Stamos is hanging on for dear life. And this is of course, where we get the, uh, intended use of the fingernail. Um, because everybody's shaking their head at me right now. Uh, <laughs> we don't We're like a- fingernail trauma. <laughs> oh my well. God. well, he's already slashed a couple people's throats with it. Cause that's what he does. If you, you know, offend him in any way, it's like you get the fingernail. Uh, but he's poking like it one into at the beginning though. It looked like he just like poked it in her chest and killed her. Yeah. yeah. At the very beginning. Like yeah. that was weird. Yeah. Cause we don't actually see that one. We see people with sp- slit throats that we are like, Oh, okay. You know, fingernail. I got it. Yeah. They call it the spike. They get the spike. Yeah. Cause he has it in a sheath. Right. And that's the whole thing in this end sequence when he's fighting with, uh, um, Stamos. <laughs> you mean, you mean gloves? Yeah, <laughs> a sheath. Where Stamos well, gets the better of them. Sheaths. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, sorry, my my hands are getting warm. My fingernail sheaths are too thick. <laughs> <laughs> that part in your car is called the sheath box compartment, right? Yes. All my what, sheaths. I thought are in just there. the, but it wasn't just the fingernail so do you, covered. Do you have work sheaths and garden sheaths? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Colin. I was. I saw. Oh, it, can we keep going? See it. <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> well, he uh, he unsheaths, ungloves. Oh, you can deglove your hand. That's a horrible thing. See Gerald's game. Um, oh but, yeah, yeah. And so there's like you know he's poking it uh, at Stamos's hand in order to get him to fall off the thing. Stamos to save himself appeals to the fact that the hermaphrodite is half woman. Although Stamos says, I'm half man. That's why I'm going to be. Uh, and he says, oh, you're so beautiful, which actually does cause Velvet Ron Ragnar from, uh, you know, th- to have that moment, right? That you're always yeah. looking for. You got to like zero in on that, that target so you can get them to pause for one second so you can turn their weapon against them. And he stabs and him in the sh- neck with his own uh, <laughs> finger knife. Fingernail Which, I mean, it's a, it's effective. Can you imagine if John Stamos looked you in the eye and told you you were beautiful? I wouldn't know it hit me. <laughs> that would give you pause. I was yeah, thinking about that a lot. Absolutely. So, Sean, you know. Yeah. Stamos. Well, there we go. The undying love for John Stamos has only been out. I mean, has he been in other uh, big movies? <laughs> I think only as like TV cameo roles as like a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't yeah. think he actually like plays roles in movies. He's, yeah, he's just done a lot of TV. He's done. I mean, he's had a, like a long career in TV. He's done lots of yeah. shows, but this was his big shot at uh, becoming a big movie star. Apparently, moving from TV into this, 
I do remember in an interview that I read, he said that, uh, you know, obviously he thought that this was going to be a thing and there'd be a series of these and it'd be a big deal. And then when it came out, it was like, oh, uh, it's not. And it's a joke. And he hated it, hated it for many years until he was able to kind of appreciate the uh, retro uh, screenings of it where, you know, people would laugh at it. He's like, well, it's a bad movie. But he said about meeting Vanity, like the first time that he met her, um, he said that uh, they were at like a table read or something. She grabbed his crotch and apparently he had like an affair with her. He said he was, she was wild. Uh, and apparently she was oh, back in that period of time. Cause didn't vanity go through like a period where she got, you know, found Jesus got saved. She retired from music and from, uh, and from films. Cause she wasn't in anything like past the 1990s. I think she had like a drug problem and all this stuff, but she got cleaned up and like walked away from the business. Um, Damn. No, I don't. I don't know. I the can't history say of I know much a matter. about her. Yeah. No, yeah, no. but I'm. St- I'm starting to appreciate her. Yeah. The more I see her. Can you believe John Stamos is 57 years old? That dude well, is like, 57 like years old. Greek. I, I can't. Be- I can't. He's a year younger than Ralph Macchio. And he was 23 when he made this movie in 1986. And he looks the same. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I bet if he took his clothes off, he'd look a little fifty-seven. I'd like to see that. Yeah, <laughs> but let's do some research and find out, Holly. I'll we'll, we'll dig into this. I'll look into it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Report back. Okay. Well, you make this priority. Yeah, Holly. Obviously, we're gonna have to watch a lot of old footage to compare it to now. So this we're is a research have to project. Yeah, many, yeah. yeah. Many uh, hours of intense. On it, study. I'll take this bullet. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, I mean, we did set up Chekhov's flamethrower. It does come back because, uh, the computer is of course has a helpful counter that's counting down to the time when the, the locks will open and allow the toxic, toxic sludge through there. Vanity is unable to help really. Cause she's in the helicopter. She's shouting over the sound of the blades down to him, you know, use the flamethrower. And so he tries to shoot the flamethrower at the thing. Cause this is again, one of the great cinematic action scenes in movie history he tries to shoot the flamethrower but it shoots like these like flame rockets or something and it misfires and he's like oh fuck it so how do you solve this problem he picks up the uh the computer and flings it into the air above the dam then he picks up the flamethrower and flings it at the computer and they collide in midair and explode in a big ball of fire and that means uh, the computer isn't controlling the thing anymore and uh, you're saved. Yeah, that's a hell of a shot. Yeah. I mean, you, that's, uh, <laughs> that's how it ended. You're not conveying the excitement of this moment. I mean, like the, the Stargrove music is like, you know, blaring. Uh, there's explosions in the air and we, we're saved. We're not going to be poisoned to death by toxic water. Um, Gene Simmons is thrown over the, you know, you get stabbed in the neck and takes a dive into the off the yeah. side of the, the dam or his dummy does, which was great. I, I'm glad they didn't cut away from that dummy going over, hitting the rocks and then falling yeah. into the river. Looks great. Yeah. This is the dummy fall movie, right? It, it really is. There's a lot of dummy falls. How many dummies did we see? Like there's at least three or four of them. I think, I think I saw at least three. Yeah. They go from a, a, a height all the way to the bottom and the camera follows them all the way down yep definitely dummies yeah well i mean so at the end of this movie right i mean uh everybody's gonna live happily ever after star grove's gonna join the bureau he's got biology oh. colin he's busy that's right he's got to get back to school so he can't hang out with darja he has to refuse oh. the offer to join the uh secret force because him and cliff you know they have the makings mm-hmm. of, of secret agents, according to the U.S. Department of Defense. Um, so he actually drives away in a dune buggy because, I mean, why not? We got a dune buggy. It's one of the bad guys dune buggies, I think. That's an image from the yep. end of your movie. You've already used the motorcycles and all that in the Corvettes dune buggy. So they head off and then he turns around and comes back and picks the girl up because we're not like James Bond. He's not leaving. Well, James Bond always ends up going off with the girl at the end, not going. Right. Like, Sorry, he's a- honey. I've got biology. Right. He's just got, uh, he's just got to make it cool. He's just like, I'll see you later. And then he drives around for five minutes. He's like, you can come with, I guess. Yeah. He's no Jack Burton. No. Yeah. No, he's not <laughs> just going to leave. Be yeah. on his own. 
Rides off into the cool though. The what? That would have been way cool though. (laughs) Aren't you gonna kiss me? No, I don't think I will. (laughs) Uh, Idiots. Yeah. (laughs) So it's off into the sunset for uh, the the lovebirds or the three until the next year when part two comes out. Yeah, which we were sadly robbed. Life has changed. Of never too young to die too. What's the new James Bond movie called? <laughs> or never too young to die. Um, no time to die. Okay, so no. we're very close. So I was like, never too old to die. I mean, <laughs> it, right? <laughs> we are getting very close. <laughs> yes, that is <laughs> true. You're never too old to die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, you've listened to us talk this far, and thank you very much. Let's read some of your mail and uh, tell you what we actually individually thought of this movie. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I hope someone's been trimming his nails because I really don't want to see what they look like. Oh, yeah. When's the last? I think they just fall (laughs) off at a certain length. Pretty sure. <laughs> he might have, Michaela, he might have one stuck in his asshole. You never know. Like that's, oh, that's well, Colin's problem. Then. Yeah. Well, if, right. he's doing, yeah. He's, if he's working hard and doing his chores the way he's supposed to, they should just be breaking off naturally. So yeah, like the fly, he just squeezes and they come out and there's a little bit of <laughs> comes out. Yep. Everywhere. Got to clean that up. It's gross. Uh, we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us. And tell us what you thought about tonight's episode or any episode or how we're doing. All you got to do is get a hold of us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Sarai freak show or Twitter at sat freak show. You can email us Saturday at freak show, yahoo.com or follow along on Instagram at Saturday night freak show about tonight's movie. Never too young to die. Nelson Nascimento writes in and says, Gene Simmons performance has to be seen to be believed. John Stamos as an action hero. Unfortunately, not so much. Mm-hmm. I, I am disappointed. He's not a better action hero. Yeah, me too. I want better for him, you know, or yeah. playing anyone other than John Stamos. Was that like, I mean, wasn't he? He was playing. John yeah, he Stamos. basically plays himself. Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, J.D. Calabrese says the only thing I remember about this movie, besides it being a pseudo Bond film, is that freaking Stargrove theme. <laughs> Stargrove. Yeah. Me stuck in my head for a while, for Stargrove. sure. I already forgot it. Not going to lie. I was going to say, Colin, I don't think you're saying it right. Okay. Uh, Teresa Ann says, this immediately makes me think of the movie podcast Junk Food Cinema, who always referenced the Stargrove song in their episodes. Gary Lee says, Lance Stargrove is my favorite form of Stamos. <laughs> well, there's wow. not really a whole it's lot a bold- to choose from. <laughs> well, there's there's like Dr. Stamos and there's Jesse and the Ripper Stamos. There's a, there's a few Stamoses. <laughs> Stay All right. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says the movie is funny, but if you just look at the title alone, it reads alongside a list of James Bond movies. You wouldn't be able to tell if this is some insane 80s movie with Jane Simmons at the, as the villain. Prepare yourself, guys, because this one is nuts. Mm. Yeah, if this was a who wants to be a millionaire, like which one of these titles is not a James Bond movie, I think I would lose that question. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, this is like your your giallo generator. It's just like, uh, yeah. it's like, oh, this could be a Bond movie. Who knows? Yeah. What was the there was a, you remember when Sean Connery came back as James Bond in a not an unofficial James Bond movie? I never say that. never again. Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. that was unofficial. <laughs> yeah, that's not like a real one. He's James oh, Bond, but it's not made by the James Bond people. Um, yeah, you just have to use like absolute words in your title. Never, always, you know, think <laughs> too, you know, that then it's a two five movie. Yeah, twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, about last week's episode, we watched the movie Rad. Uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, I just got done watching this. I thought Super Mario Brothers was the first live action film video game into adaptation, but apparently it was Paperboy. <laughs> was it me or wow. did it seem like crew was not the winner at the end of the race it looked like at the last minute a stunt would have turned his front tire to the side giving bart the edge oh i don't I'd, remember i, I wouldn't remember put either. it past that movie to, to pull some editing tricks like yeah. that wasn't it they I mean, had to that get up on the, you had to put your wheel on the top of the whatever 
dive thing. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's the, the Cobra Kai version of it. We go 40, 30 years in the future, and we realize that <laughs> he didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Sean like, really wants guy, to make this happen. <laughs> let's do it. Well, uh, Travis Legler says regarding your bike type conversation. So that's right. Listen to our rad episode for this. Um, what we were talking about on the show, uh, Travis is saying were standard bicycles. The bikes that were a little bit more heavy duty in the thicker tires are often referred to as mountain bikes. Dirt yeah. bikes were often thought of as motorized, very similar to the bikes the kids are in the beginning of pumpkin head were using. I like the pumpkin head oh. reference. Yeah, that's a good one for, you know, Dirt bikes, pumpkin head. That's the go-to. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Mountain bikes. Mountain bikes have the straight ahead bars though, right? Is that the Yes. Yeah. I think so. Actually, I think mountain bikes. See, again, I don't know if this is right. <laughs> yeah, we I just call we, them, again, we just don't well, know. We, we yeah. all know what each one is. I'm just saying what we called it, yeah. whether it was correct or not. We called it dirt bikes. Yeah. Okay. So did I. And there it is. All right. Uh Terry Vance says, uh, I remember this one. I thought as a kid watching it. It was not a bad film. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a five-year-old's going, hmm, you know what? Child not a bad film. Yep. Mother, not a bad film. Uh, Matthew Ola says, then clearly thrashing is your next logical step. <laughs> it appears so. What was the other one BMX Bandits? Yes. Okay. Yeah. With Nicole Kidman. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, about the previous week's movie, we watched Killer Workout. Killer Workout. Karate Warrior 2 writes in. Oh, he, says, he says, <laughs> God damn, talk about a total 180 from Dead Heat. I loved Aerobicide, and you guys didn't, <laughs> except for my loyal pal, Michaela. The rest of you have just made the list. <laughs> he says, God damn Aww. it, part two. Now I'm going to have to live with loving a movie that has been slapped with a pervert quotient label. However, that That's will never <laughs> dim my love for Debbie. And I was actually sad when I realized she was the one killed in the car. And you know, that's true love. And he says, P.S. I didn't game the system. I only voted one time and I asked for some help from my friends. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> I got your back, Dom. I'm on the right side of history with this one. <laughs> I stand by my choice. Yeah, me too. Uh, killer workout. Um Peter Gatt says, why didn't you watch the Jane Fonda workout video instead? At least she's won an Oscar and comes from Hollywood royalty. <laughs> <that? Who's>, <laughs> right. Who says we didn't watch it afterwards? Yeah. And the totally nude workout. I mean, you could also watch Perfect, which has Oscar winners and Hollywood royalty as well. So, you know, Very true. that's true. another option. That's Very true. true. Pat Hetfield says, I know it was already seen by at least one of you, but I think it would have been good if you would eventually get to the other big health spa horror movie, Death Spa. I don't recall seeing it myself, but I've seen enough reviews and discussions about it on YouTube that I know it has a bunch of incredibly bizarre and goofy scenes in it, and you should get a laugh out of the utter weirdness in it. Um, I, I updated the uh, the fellow freaks, but uh, I, I remember I said on our... Uh, a Robicide episode, I was going to go watch Death Spa. Uh, I watched about a half hour of it, and then I realized that this is a freak show movie, and I stopped it. So I'm going to save <laughs> save and save yeah, all of that. Told you guys, I've seen future, it before. Future yeah. episode, that is a freak show movie. So, um, I, like I said, soon. I stopped it at Sexy Asparagus, and that's what I'll leave you with a tease. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it will be, it will be coming. Okay, well, I guess that means we've come to that. The most exciting part of the show, we're going to find out what we each thought of tonight's movie, Never Too Young to Die. We're going to go around the table, and we're going to start with... Um, Michaela! Michaela, what did you think about tonight's movie starring Stamos? Well, I had seen it before, and the, but like, there's only a few things that stuck with it, uh, you know, with me from it. Fingernails, Stamos, Gene Simmons. That was, like, basically it. Um, and I think I know why now, because there's not much in between those things. Like it definitely has some lulls, but and I, I, it's not a good movie. But when I also think about what are your stay most movie options, uh, you know, I don't know what else there is. I honestly couldn't. I don't think I could name more than like four things Stamos has been in if you ask me to. Um, so I think between the absurdity of it all, like it this is this is definitely a seeing is believing situation, right? Like 
watch this for the spectacle. I really want to know if there is a mystery science theater episode of this movie, because I guarantee it would be one of my all time favorite episodes and I would fucking love it. So I'm going to look into that because if they haven't done it. They really need to. Yeah. The, the star riff, tra- riff tracks now, right? They just do. Yeah. The yeah. Either one, man, I'll take either one, but I mean, I'm sure some of the stuff we said sounded really strange, but I don't know how we could better describe it because it's just kind of a lot to take in at certain moments. But then it'll cool down for a really long time with nothing in between those crazy moments, which is frustrating because when you get on a crazy train, you just want to like go full steam ahead. And this just keeps making pit stops. Mm -hmm. Um, It does. It is a very mismatched movie. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't really understand its tone. Um, there is, if you want to know the why of anything in this movie, that you're in the wrong place. There is the why isn't important. Just just go along for the ride. So I think I'm going to recommend it because I do think it is seeing is believing. And I think it is crazy enough in its moments to warrant a watch. John, what did you think? Ah, uh, never too young to die. Um, I'll tell you, this is some this is some '80s cheese right here. Um, and it is it is full of there is spectacle in this movie. I will give it that. Um, I don't know what it is about tonight. This, this, this one just didn't hit me the right way. Like, I think, uh, like Michaela said, there are too many, it's too many lulls, too many dull points. I think in this movie, it's got some moments. I'll tell you that vanity's always good. That, that 10 minute, uh, trying not to fuck her scene is like legitimately jaw dropping just in its, uh, in, in what they do. Um, Gene Simmons is, uh, He's an actor. Um, I, I, he's, <laughs> or maybe, or maybe not, because I think this is um, this is definitely just another side of Gene Simmons's personality. Like that's why he, I think he enjoyed, despite what he says now. I think Gene Simmons thoroughly enjoyed making this movie and Seems getting like to it. do the th- getting to do the things he wanted to do. Um, and it is like it is something else to see. Um, I don't know. You gotta you gotta judge and see how much eighties cheese you're, you're willing to stand. Um, it's got some good points, but there's not enough there for me to recommend it. Like I don't feel the need to watch this again. Like I got it. Um, I don't know if you want to see Gene Simmons and drag just going crazy. Then yeah, watch the movie. Um, you'll get something out of it, but <sighs> it's not quite enough. Not for me. I wasn't feeling it tonight, so I'm gonna pass. I'm never too young to die. Uh, Holly, what did you think? I mean, what can you say about Never Too Young to Die? You know, whatever, whatever happened to predictability, the milkman, the paper boy, and you evening TV. <laughs> you stopped. Oh, I wanted to see how long you were going to keep going with that. <laughs> I was waiting to see. I was like, do you know where I'm going with this? I mean, I can just start singing it now if you want me to. No? Okay. So I'm doing my very important John Stamos research. I just want to say I found a selfie from 2014. Sean, he does not look like a man in his 50s. A shirtless one, I should say. Uh, nice. Okay, well. <laughs> I'll show you up when we're uh, done recording. <laughs> I'll screen <Nice>. share. <laughs> Please do. Um, I'm convinced that when Gene Simmons got this part, if they gave him any direction at all, which I'm not sure that they did, I think he just went with it. But if they did, I'm fairly confident. They just told him picture you're in Rocky horror picture show, but playing a Batman villain, go with it. And that's Gene Simmons in this movie. Like it's that's if that's, if that interests you, then this might be the movie for you. Um, It's crazy and it's entertaining. um, But I don't think it's, enough you know sean mckayla you've already said it there's there's not enough in between um as much as we love the stamos he's not enough in this movie he's just kind of bland um so the crazy gene simmons is not enough for me to recommend it i i agree i don't think i would watch this again it's not crazy enough there are some entertaining parts but not enough for me so i can't recommend it so colin why did you bring this movie tonight? Well, I think <clears throat> there's a thing, you know, if, uh, especially to the four of us on this show. Um, there's, you know, like we have seen some crazy fucking shit uh, in the movies that we've covered. And you kind of get to a point where it's like, okay, you know, you're raising the bar every time. And then 
But so I think when a movie like Never Too Young to Die comes along, we're kind of like, well, it's not as crazy, right, as uh, Night Killer, you know, or to me, Pieces or Star Crash or, you know, one of those right. fucking things. Uh, Your Hunter from the Future. But it's like this is uh, the entertainment value on this is significantly higher, I think, than uh, like your average kind of bad movie. Uh, there's a lot going on here that's just like, I mean, it's not, uh, again, I'm not saying it's a good movie. Entertainment wise, though, it's, uh, it, you know, if you're looking for bad movie stuff, like this one's pretty entertaining with bad lines of dialogue. I mean, just like laughable howlers. Uh, you can't believe it. Like, how did this is like, who? fucking wrote this a 12 year old uh gene simmons right in that performance just being like way 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 yeah i mean it, well it's a big over the top performance i guess so uh it's crazy uh i don't know what else yeah it's well tim curry maybe in rocky or a picture show but it's gene simmons i mean that's the thing that i guess is part of the appeal of the movie is knowing who gene simmons is outside of it knowing who john stamos is and the career that he went on and so now looking back on it you kind of like you know there's this is the john stamos joke movie that he did probably and wish that he could forget um right yeah because i mean it's not a well-made movie right but i think there is enough uh you know i mean there's action scenes that are they're they're decent there's enough of them that that held my interest i suppose uh but uh overall it was uh i just thought like you know hysterical and i suppose that was you know why i was entertained by it was like okay we have to address this movie on the saturday night (laughs) freak show because it's uh yeah it's kind of out there. So I think, you know, obviously if you're, if you're keying into that kind of uh, uh, type of film, I think you will enjoy it. And so I'm recommending that you check out never too young to die. It's definitely one of those movies that it's like, even though three of us are not recommending it, I think we would all agree. Like we had to watch this movie. You yeah. know, Didn't Michaela recommend it. Yeah. It's I split. did recommend it. We're I'm split. Sorry, two of us. I'm sorry. Two of us. Yeah. I'm sorry. Half and half even the half of us that didn't recommend it, we would still be like, no, you like, we had to watch this. We had to talk about this movie, you know? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, that's uh, that's a nice movie. So next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. (laughs) What are we watching next week? (laughs) Uh, All right, guys. Um, I'm sorry. No, no, Uh I'm so sorry. No, it's the 30th anniversary. It has to be done next week. We'll be watching nothing but trouble. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. This I is the, fucking hate I'm so, so much sorry. Right now. <laughs> this is the movie I'm so that, sorry. that they said they weren't going to show up. If you did this movie, get ready for Sean's last ever episode. Cause we're all going to kill them. <laughs> um, I think, <laughs> I, I think, uh, well, I, I think, uh, like Sean, I said, I've never finished this movie. <laughs> Like I've never been able to finish it. <laughs> That's the thing. You now you're gonna have support. Yeah, you're gonna be. Yeah. You're gonna be <laughs> you have it's, no way of knowing if I'm actually watching this movie or not, though. So I think, um, uh, Michaela, I don't think you do that to us or your listeners, your devoted fans or your out listeners. there who want to get your opinion. I do underestimate on. my hate for this movie. <laughs> you have. You never know. They could. The third act could really come in and just whip it all up for you, and you wow. love it. The movie that breaks the Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah, Nothing. I hope you guys are excited for the end of the podcast. Because here it is. <laughs> <laughs> will Will we survive? And what will be left of us you, next week Sean, on the you, Freak Show? You have no idea what we're capable of. You have no idea how high I can fly. <laughs> I think uh, I think somebody's going to egg my house. It yeah. Feels like that's the energy I'm getting from this. All right. Well, I've only seen about half of it myself, but uh, okay. Oh God, so next week, folks. there you go. We're going in for nothing but trouble on the Saturday Sean, night. Sean, I have to pay for this. I'm ending you. Oh shit. Oh, oh yeah, I better not have to pay for this. <laughs> we'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see how this plays out on next week's episode. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>